Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I source cars for people on a professional basis. Although most of the cars I source are between £1,000 and £5,000, very often I've been asked to show something a little bit cheaper on the channel and so I came up with no budget reviews. The series where we look at cars that you can buy in good condition with an MOT for under a thousand pounds and you can enjoy driving. We don't film this in an expensive manner, we don't use separate microphones, we don't use do it head tripods, we don't even use a DSLR but we do have a lot of fun. I apologise in advance for the wind noise viewers, it is very, very windy where I am and uh, I'm afraid there's not an awful lot that I can do about it. I'm just going to have to talk very loudly, um, which uh, I'm sure a lot of you don't want me to do, but that's the only way to deal with such a situation. This is a 1991 Ford Fiesta Mark III 1.3 flight, which is a special edition. Uh, which is kind of based on the gear model, but the gear did have different wheels from this. It would have looked even nicer, I think, if uh, this had the uh, spot lamps on it, but it doesn't. So this has the uh, 1.3 Valencia or HCS engine, uh, developing about 60 horsepower. The Fiesta Mark III, when it came out in 1989, was something of a sort of revelation, really, because it had five doors and much more modern styling. The Mark II, which was in production from 1983 to uh, 89, was a very heavily revised Mark I, and actually you can fit Mark I doors and a boot lid to a Mark II and vice versa if you want. So, sort of clean sheet, um, not the same platform or anything, but of course some of the same engines and things like that. We will use this key, which has a little light on it, um, there's a button that doesn't actually work to open up the boot. This actually has a an internal boot release as well, which was a very fancy option on these. Not many cars got that. Rear wiper, of course. I don't think the base spec Mark III got one of those. Um, just look under here. I, I think we're actually in a situation, yep, where the uh, spare is actually under the floor. Um, let's see if we can get down and kind of see. It's roughly there. We can't really see it unless I sort of put my knees on the ground or something. But um, practical boot shape for the time. Uh, bigger than a Mark II boot, that's for sure. Light's not working, that's just neither here nor there really, it probably needs a new bulb. Uh, but just the one reversing light and the one fog lamp. I remember when I was younger, these were just absolutely everywhere. Everywhere. Um, they're not so much now, um, and we can see just a tiny hint of why that might be here. Um, but they, yeah, they made tons and tons and tons of these. It does look good on, on these alloy wheels. I think are the right ones for this car and uh, it's just, just so familiar anyone who familiar with sort of 1990s Fords are just gonna completely <laughs> have a massive hit of nostalgia uh, just looking at the seat fabrics and things like that let's get inside and get up this wind not the most space really um, oh that's a lot better isn't it viewers a lot quieter um, not the most sort of uh, space in the back um, my head's brushing the roof, but I think some of you who would have had this as a first car, oh, that's a Conquer, I think, hitting the roof. That's nice. Um, that was the first car, would have crammed your friends into here, and as many of them as possible, um, and gone to exciting things like uh, gigs and whatever in these. Uh, windy windows, and then these uh, handles, which... Um, the, lay, the less ones I think were sort of for locking the door, which you can still do on these individually. Although let's not lock myself in the car, that'd be bad. Um, three point seat belts of course in the back, no armrest or anything. Um, this seat does not split, it just folds in one, in one piece, because you can, you can see there, it, it's, it's, there's no sort of gap. Uh, plastic back on the seats, very common on, on early 90s Fords. And just a very kind of plain and simple interior, no nonsense really. Um, but for the time, a very sort of contemporary place to be. Ashtrays, actually, not on this door. You only get one, it's on that side for some 
really really weird reason uh, no center console for the back no cup holder something like that the seat belt uh, buckles are actually on sorry the seat belt um what do you call those most of most of buckles or of the something else of the uh, uh, anyway those things on the stalks are on stalks that's a silly way of saying it, isn't it um yeah interiors are actually working on the rear doors which wasn't a given on a car like this back in the day um but i think i prefer to sit in the front because it's not it's not very roomy in here at all. Right. So, first thing I noticed straight away is, like, a lot of Fords of this era. The hazard light switch to the top of the steering column, where... It, so you don't have to even think about where it is, you can see it. Original Ford radio in here. I don't actually know if that works or not, but never mind. Um, Fog lamps here, rigid window. I think those are out of like a Mark IV Escort or something. And then this uh, really, really simple heating and ventilation interface. Uh, just, just two little levers here, and there's the Peter knob for the fan speed. Because this is a luxury model, we have a remote remote boot release here, and electric windows. I don't think you could get four electric windows on a Mark uh, um, Mark III Fiesta, could be wrong. Glove box, we'll just see if my secret mesh documents go in. Yes please. Excellent. Can't remember if you can get a passenger airbag on these, even the classic models which were the sort of um, later ones that stayed in production whilst the Mark IV came in um, from 1995 and then finished in 1997. So, Quite a long-lived um, car, it's about eight years, um, uh, much longer than either the Mark um, 1 or Mark 2 Fiesta. Simple kind of door pocket, simple kind of fabric, that's sort of wiped down actually, that. that's uh, sort of like a plastic. Um, nice trend at the top, no exposed metal, which is, which is nice. Um, steering wheel. <laughs> You need to grip this quite tightly because we haven't got any power steering in this car, so um, you need to grip that quite tightly. Um, very similar instrument cluster to the Mark IV Escort and the Mark V Escort. Um, no nonsense, really. The choke's actually here. It's actually on there. It's it's easy when you when you know where it is. Although, like, if you'd expect it to be kind of here, I don't know what that's supposed to be at all. Maybe that's like a I don't know, a, a front fog lamp switch or something. Digital clock in here, um, very simple vents, and uh, a, a manual sunroof, which I'm not going to open today because I don't think we need it. Do we get a sun visor mirror? Oh, there we go, viewers. But no, we only get one for the, dr for the uh, passenger, we don't get one for the driver. Right, uh, let's have a look at this lovely HCS engine. Right, viewers, I'm doing my best to shelter under this bonnet, but if there's really bad wind noise, then I do apologise. So, good old HCS engine for Valencia. Um, took some relation, I think, to the Kent engine, later known as the Endura E. Overhead valve engine, generating 60 horsepower. This one's on a carb, uh, later ones were fuel injected. I think they were used for these until 2002. It's a bit crazy, really. Very, very simple to see everything. I mean look at the gearbox access on this and space at the front and things like that. Obviously uh, you can fit engines up to 1.8 litres to uh, one of these remote servos so the brakes aren't perhaps the best but they're much better than a, um, a Nova or a Mark II Polo facelift which were made at the same time this was out. Um, those have really terrible brakes. The brakes on this are actually okay um, as far as I know. I think we're actually looking at a Dagenham built car here. Um, it says Britain there, so I think that's what it means. Excellent. I don't actually know if this car was registered by Ford themselves. Um, it's got an Essex plate on it, so it might have been. But there also were plenty of dealerships in that area registering um, Fiestas for themselves because these were really popular, particularly in the southeast of England. Um, popular anywhere, but particularly in the southeast. Right, I think it's time to go for a drive. Goodness me, viewers. 
feel like I'm back in some kind of sort of retro 90s drama. This uh, 1.3 HCS engine, um, formerly known as the Valencia engine, and I think it has some relation to the old Kent engine as well. This developed 60 horsepower. There are actually two other variants of this engine used in the Mark III Fiesta. One litre um, that produced 45 horsepower, and then the 1.1 that produced either 50 or 55 horsepower. It depends on whether it's fuel injection and what model year it is. There was also a 1.4 engine, which is um, I think called the CFI engine, or the um, some variation of the old uh, on the old um, CVH. Gosh, this thing's noisy. <laughs> um, that developed either 71 or 75 horsepower. Then we get onto the 1.6 um, engine which uh, actually had um, either uh, 105 horsepower, or if you go for the RS Turbo, 133 horsepower. The 1.6 was actually later replaced with uh, the ZTEC R engine, which is out of the, um, out of the Mondeo, and that produced uh, 90 horsepower. There was also a 1.8 um, in the RS 1800. Actually, it was in both the RS 1800 and the XR2i later on. The earlier XR2i's had the uh, CVH engine, later ones had that 1.8. And uh, that produced 105 horsepower. Or in the RS 1800, 130 horsepower. There were also some uh, diesels available. But, as usual, due to controversial government legislation and uh, all kinds of other reasons, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. So apart from this heavy steering, what's this uh, Mark III Fiesta like to drive? Well, the Ford gearbox is quite positive. Nice five-speed manning in this car. A lot of the cars were just, were just four-speeds. There seem to be an intermittent wiper speed in this, which is also really, really weird. It just it feels a little bit sort of unrefined. That That's no surprise given it's an old OHV engine, but it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. It's not as noisy as I thought it would be. It's a nice size to thread through city streets and things like that, and it doesn't feel particularly slow despite only having 60 horsepower. I imagine the one litre is very slow. It's not as um, kind of refined as something like a, a Corsa B is, but those are actually for the era quite refined cars. This is a bit of an older design and it does feel it. But I quite like it. The ride is actually okay. It's not crashy or sort of bouncy or anything as I was maybe expecting it to be. It's actually quite compliant. Slip it into fourth, there we go. Yeah, you can sort of poodle along quite easily at um, 30 miles an hour in fourth, which is good. We've got some torque here in this in this old engine, which uh, makes it easy to drive at out speeds. It's not particularly sort of fast or exciting or anything, but a lot of people then and now wouldn't have really needed something like that. I mean, it's something just to get them around and know with dealers absolutely everywhere and repair costs and part prices quite low you could run these for not a lot of money just obviously watching the rust and making sure that you did service it regularly obviously that's still the biggest issue with these cars uh, today is <laughs> is the rust um, like a lot of cars of this era you know so many other cars as well just had exactly the same problem. So not unique in any, by any means, but because there were just so many of these, um, see you did see some rusty ones around. This one's not a perfect example, but it is, I think, in almost daily use. 
Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Let's now talk about uh, Mark III Fiesta trim levels views and oh my gosh, there are an awful lot of them. So we have things like the L, the Bonus, the LX, the L, uh, sorry, no, no, I don't want to put L twice. The Sapphire, the SI, the SX, the Gear, the RS800, the XR2i, the RS Turbo, the Flight, the Meridian, the Fresco, the Cayman, the LA, the Bonus 2, the Quartz, the Freestyle, the Mistral, the Duet, the Finesse, the Classic, I've just sold its own, its own right, and then the Classic Quartz and Classic Cabaret, the Viscati, which is another one um, during the Fiesta Classic time, uh, the Azura, the Popular, and of course the Popular Plus. These cars were built in uh, Spain, um, in the UK, and in uh, two plants in Germany. So, viewers, the Mark III Ford Fiesta, is this a car that you should consider for your hard-earned budget up to £1,000? Well, if you can find a, a good one and they haven't all rusted away, um, then uh, quite possibly. But some of the engines do require cam box servicing. Um, the uh, CFI engines require that, as, as do the uh, ZTEC R engines. Um, but uh, these were pretty tough mechanically when they were when they were new. Uh, in general, obviously there are things that uh, that do go wrong. The central locking on this car, for example, is not the best, but it's amazing and actually has it. Um, but they are still pretty practical. You can get a lot of the parts for these actually, I think. But even the mechanical bits, it's pretty easy to find them. And uh, although the ones without power steering are quite heavy by modern standard. A lot of people just used to cope with that kind of thing. So, yeah, if it may be a starter classic, I think this would uh, be a good option. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we'll see you again soon for more no-cost motoring.